Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greens of peace. My next guest grew up in a Catholic family. Father was kind of agnostic, ended up doing the new age thing. Consciousness, meditation, third eye, astrology, crystals. Kind of like this. With this and like put it under your pillow. Because uh -huh. it almost like helps you come into like a spiritual awakening. Okay. So that's really cool. It just gives off really good energy. This apparently has um, interaction with like your third eye. Okay. I don't know if you know about that, some spiritual stuff. And then he met a Christian woman, started going deeper into Christianity after he got baptized. But he started having more questions than answers. He wanted something clear, precise, without contradiction. He wasn't getting it. He became an agnostic, but he was still doing some good things. He was pushing the NoFap, helping people with addictions or dealing with addictions, became come a YouTube star. And let's see where he's at in life today with Enrio. My special guest. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, Habibi. What an opening, man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Hira Bilal Alameen. How you doing, brother? Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. How did, you get, did you get your cold shower in today? No, I haven't. I haven't yet. But after this, inshallah. You still doing the cold showers? Every now and then, periodically. Uh, now that you say that, I'm going to have to hop back on them every uh, single day. All right. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so tell us. Let's start off. Uh, People can see your story in detail. You have it out there. It's on your channel. I want to kind of touch upon it, but I want to go into this. Let, let's tell us what's this, because this is kind of like a growing movement. Let's let's watch this again, and you can give us some details when you talk about the third eye, these crystals, spirituality. Like put this and like put it under your pillow, because uh -huh. it almost like helps you come into like a spiritual awakening. Okay. So that's really cool. It just gives off really good energy. This apparently has um, interaction with like your third eye. Okay. I don't know if you know about that, some spiritual stuff. What the is that third eye what's going on it's like the jowl what are they talking about yeah it's it's a lot so it, the whole new age stuff has its roots in hinduism mm. a lot of people don't realize that but it has its roots in hinduism and in hinduism you have these uh things known as the chakras and the third eye is uh the the second to final chakra before the crown chakra it's uh it's pretty ridiculous and i don't want to like throw dirt on them, you know, like we're even told not to speak uh, badly over another person's religion or something like that. But when you start getting into this stuff, you, you start to see how kind of uh, twisted it all is, how altered it all is. And then you have this kind of what's this like? So getting into meditation, no problem. I mean, we try to we can contrast that with like you know, Islam, we try to meditate, you know, I mean, really getting into Salat, you know, connecting with the one creator, right, being grateful for all the mm -hmm. blessings, etc. So when you talk about meditation, what kind of meditation are you talking about at that time that you're doing? What does it entail? And this consciousness, we, I think consciousness, you think about taqwa, consciousness of yeah, the creator. Yeah, that's what it should be. Yeah. That's what it should be. What did it translate for you then? Um, then the whole consciousness aspect was more so like, um, they said you open up your pineal gland and when you open up your pineal gland, it's like you're opening yourself up to a, a different dimension. Keep this in mind, a different dimension. Now, people do all these different techniques to go into this different dimension. Um, this different dimension, they call it the astral realm. Um, I think it's, you probably refer to it as like maybe the fifth dimension or something like that. But when you go into this place and when you experience it, it's like you, you kind of open yourself up to things where uh, some might be good, but they are going to be bad as well. And after coming to the sun, you kind of start to realize, okay, these things that I was experiencing, then this, this state and all this stuff, like it, this is gins. This is gins. This, this is no if, ands, or buts, but it, it's what, gins what's that you what, open what's yourself gin, up to. What's gins? When so doing, when when you do these techniques to open up your third wow. eye, you actually open yourself up to jinns. Yeah. Yeah. So people actually take this. Uh, when you do when you do what when you do this uh, third eye stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have um they have like transcendental meditation. They have um this one yoga called uh, Shambhavi Mahamudra. Um, they have uh, astral projection. Mm -hmm. 
certain practices. They have even drugs like um, DMT. You can literally smoke the, the DMT in and of itself. And what these things do is uh, it, it takes you somewhere else. It makes you experience more than what you are experiencing here. And the things that you experience wherever you go, listen, like after coming to Islam, I know that that's that's gins. There's no if and the buts. Because you've experienced it, you know what it entails. Oh, so you, you have some, yeah. some even some Muslims naively like jumping into this kind of stuff mm. and experimenting. But this mm. is clear. So you from your experience, from what you've you're actually you're entering into this unseen realm of the evil spirit, the jinns. Yeah. 100%. What about these crystals? We hear about these crystals. Uh, see, I never really like understood the crystals too much because um, if, if you look at quartz crystal, they use that in watches. Yeah. And it, it's a, uh, it's, I think it's called um, pi, piezoelectric or, or pyoelectric. I might be butchering that term. But um, the crystal in and of itself is capable of conducing electricity. So they use it in the watch, therefore, to basically power the watch. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as like, okay, us theorizing that like, okay, well, this crystal can do that, then that means it can do all these other things and each crystal has its own little property. That's that's kind of questionable. And when I was getting into it, you know, I, I didn't really fully accept the whole crystals. Like, oh, this crystal makes you more clear cognitively and stuff like that. But um, there was one crystal in particular that was, I think it was called, um, I got to get back to you on the name, but it was like a greenish type stone crystal. And I never understood why, but anytime that I would keep this, this stone like next to me, I would start feeling really out of it. Like my mind would just be all foggy and... I, I just I couldn't think properly, and I know I know this is true because every time that I, I had that next to me, same experience every single time. Gins again? Perhaps you you, you get into Perhaps. experiment and stuff. This is all stuff. Shaitan is like having the tools that he's using to like mislead people and get yeah. you distracted over here when you should be directing all your attention to the one who created you. That's crazy. Subhanallah. Yeah. So let's go back to the other one. So there's a lot of drugs involved and in opening up with the subconscious. We've mm -hmm. seen like some um, people going to Mexico, some celebrities. Uh, yeah. And then they, there's a special drug that they get from the lizard. Peyote. Peyote? Oh, wait, no, no, no. If it's, if it's from the lizard. Um, you know, I don't, I, it's some animal. It can be something else. I, I, if, I, it, if, it's, I, if it's an animal, I think it's called toad. Toad, that's the one. That's the yeah, one. Toad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same. It's um, I think I think they refer to it as an M A O I. Uh huh. So what? The same thing takes you into that different realm. What is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, you could call it like a psychedelic. Psychedelic. You could call it like a psychedelic, but uh -huh. the realm that you're entering is not hallucinogenic. Like, yeah, it, it, there's something more happening there because like the things that people experience. It's very similar, mm -hmm. you know, and then like you, you encounter different beings, different entities there. And like these people that are doing these things, they don't know what it is. So they're doing it and then they're thinking, oh, I'm encountering this being, this entity, and this entity is helping me and all that stuff. But like little do you know that this right here is a gent because there's been many reports where people go into these, uh, these states right and then they start to interact with these entities and these entities they come off at, at first they come off nice they come off uh non-threatening like helping them and then like after after they've been with this entity for x amount of time like then they do a switch up and the entity turns into just this like this evil thing that's completely out to ruin this person's experience at that time so yeah it's it's uh it's crazy you got a lot of experience i mean most people like who tasted all this stuff and then you come to what we'll talk about later the way upon life you're upon now it's like uh night and day huh what yeah, about astro yeah. astrology now also uh i i never dipped too far into that mm -hmm. but I, I i have had experiences where 
I've talked to people who are quote unquote, uh, I guess you could say astrologers. No, I'm not astrologers. It's, they don't even refer to themselves as that. They um the tarot card readers who use astrology and then they use all this stuff to be able to like uh, tell people's fortunes and all this stuff. And, and some of the things I saw were pretty scary how accurate they were. But again, coming to Islam, you start to understand like how it all works, how the jinn are just. Back to, wow. Yeah. Back yeah. to the, back to the jinn, right. Mm. You, you know, the, the um, Hadith that talks about, you know, about the jinn, just paraphrasing it. And then they'll end up getting some information and there'll be one truth mixed with 99 lies, right? Yeah. Kind of yeah. reminds me of uh, when people bring up like Nostradamus, Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. And then he'll like kind of have some vague statements that he made and people cling to that. But then they forget about like all the hundreds of things that he guessed that were just wrong, you know, blatantly wrong. Mm -hmm. And then something that possibly can fit. But you have like these people you're talking about who... Uh, hook up with the the unseen world of the jinn, right? Yeah, yeah. So Islam has those answers. It tells you there's that unseen world, and so a lot of these things you can pinpoint back to the jinn. Yeah, Always. it's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. It, the more you get into it, or the more you get into Islam, like the more everything else makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like everything else only has like, in my understanding, from when I was studying different, you know. Uh, religions, different experiences and stuff like that is that uh, it's, they all have like little pieces of the, the puzzle. But when you get into Islam, like there's, there's all the pieces, all the pieces are there. Mm -hmm. So again, like the more you get into Islam, the more you understand. Then you went, then you almost got married, right? You were engaged to a Christian yeah. woman. You got, you went real deep then and yeah. you took a deep dive. You got baptized. What happened from there? Uh, so I tried getting into the whole uh, Christianity thing. Um, it it had its it had its points, you know. Like there was definitely that um, community type vibe whenever you would go to the churches. But uh, don't ask any questions. God forbid you ask any questions. That that would ruin the whole community type vibe. Um, what else? Uh, I, I tried to vibe with the notion that, that Jesus was God, but it just, it, it never, it, it never sat well. And like, anytime I would even have that thought, like run across my mind, I'm just like, it, it just it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't connect. Like there's, there's something wrong here. So, and that just kind of led me, like after her and I split, it led me to, just kind of straying away from the whole Christianity concept because it, it's again it doesn't make sense and then you can't ask questions because God forbid it you know. Did you ever go back to her? Does she know that you ended up accepting Islam? Did you ever go talk to her again? And what was her reaction? I Your have former no idea. I have no idea. You guys she, lost touch. Yeah, we lost touch. I think the last time we talked was um definitely probably like seven or eight months before I became Muslim. So I, I don't know if she knows. Maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you make an example. It's like uh, Ikea. You know, when if you get something, an instruction manual, you want it to be clear and precise. And it seems like with all these other ways that were out there, you weren't getting what was clear and precise. You were getting all these things left on interpretation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was, um, I think with everything, with everything that I was getting into it, and there was never a clear, like, okay, this is it. This is what you do. This is how you do it. Here, you have questions. Go ahead, ask your questions, but all the answers are here for you. I never had that. And then, uh, again, like, when I came onto Islam, before I even saw those answers, it all clicked for me. So, subhanAllah, it's like Allah was just kind of, like, confirming, like, hey, before you even have any questions, let me let you know that this is the truth. So that way you can already be primed and ready for this. I think you'd make a good candidate to be on the Joe Rogan podcast. Inshallah, man. Yeah. I mean, I think you'd, I think you got a lot, I got a, a lot in common. I think most uh, of the things that, some of the things he talks about, you guys actually had them. You guys, uh, you and the brothers that you had, you were commenting on one of his uh, programs. It seemed like he did kind of a turn where he was 
talk since we're mentioning the word Islam, he started mentioning the word Islam and he was talking about it in a positive light. Let's go into this next video where you and the brothers, the three Muslims, you're actually kind of, uh, you know, talking about one of his programs. Islam originally was the, the they were scientists, yeah. man. I mean, they were, they, if you look at the, the early Islamic world, they were the ones that were the most advanced at one point in history. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that were pushing mathematics and science and, and, and reason and logic. You know, it's just, it, it comes in cycles, man. It comes in cycles of suppression and dominance. And, you know, the, the real concern is uh, unstoppable dictatorships like China and Russia. And the, when, when there's no dissent and no discussion, I've got a lot of friends who are Arabs. Um, I spent a lot of time in the Middle East. Um, I love them. They're awesome. Uh, there are some. That's deep, huh? I love them. They're awesome. It takes like, <laughs> that was one of the misconceptions you had when he said Arab. You thought all Arabs, all Muslims were Arabs. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So what, what were you guys discussing there? It was fascinating to see Joe because we've done some programs before where he kind of like got out of his lane and we respectfully, kindly, academically, we brought on some scholars. We addressed the issues that he was talking about because he had he had some guests that were spewing this hate rhetoric, misinformation. And then we academically cleared it up. And it's just nice to see him actually talking about Islam in, in this where you got in this video in a positive light. What was your guys' conclusion at the end? What were you guys, what, some of the things that you guys discussed in that video? Um, if I remember 100%, but I think he was, um, I think the thing that he was referring to was that uh, maybe, maybe Islam has the answers. Or maybe I'm, I'm getting it wrong. Here. That, that's deep. I think the, the title was, uh, is Joe Rogan secretly a Muslim? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, then I'm, I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'm not wrong. He was, uh, he was saying that, like, maybe, maybe Islam has the answers. Maybe the Muslims have the answers here. That's, like, the whole gist of, like, what we were trying to get at, mm -hmm. what he was trying to get at. Yeah. So, yeah. Because he takes to a kind of person that you would think he's expert. He does a lot of those psych psychedelics, right? The oh, marijuana. He does a lot of the uh, different drugs. He's ex he's open to experimenting, right? So why not experiment with Islam? You've experimented yeah. with everything else. Yeah. What do you think? I think about that's it? the next step for him. Right. Yeah. And I think that's any anyone. My bad for cutting you off. But anyone who does psychedelics, like the next step for them is Islam, because once you. Once you've had these experiences, like I myself, you know, suffered a lot that I had these experiences in my jahiliya. But I feel like when I came to Islam, those experiences were just kind of cemented and Allah just kind of made it like, okay, look, those experiences you had, this is why that happened. This is why there was this. This is why you, you ran into this. This is why this, this, and this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for anyone who has done psychedelics, like Islam is the next step. What would you tell Joe Rogan? What would you, if you had a chance, uh, what, what would you say to Joe, our friend Joe? I don't think I'm the best person to speak to him. I think probably Muhammad Hijab might be the best person to speak to him. Why not? I mean, you're, you have a lot in common. I mean, a lot of the things I'm sure that he's been through, a lot of the things, you know, you're, you're a person that strikes me as someone, if something is good, you know, you're open, mm -hmm. you know, you're quick to make your discipline, willpower, you help people you know, with any of these addictions and whatnot, you got a lot of positive character traits, alhamdulillah. And, you know, we can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, Joe Rogan also, he talks about some good things also. And I think that you would, you would have a lot of things in common. It'd be a good conversation. Mm -hmm. So now if you had that conversation, if it happened, you say, hey, Joe, what's up? You know, what would you tell him? Hey, Joe. Uh, first off, I'd tell him, like, what, what does he think about Islam? Uh -huh. you know and see what his thoughts are like see where he's at in that that journey and then from there i'd invite him uh not to you know 100 percent accept islam from the rip but i'd invite him to take on a dopamine detox kind of strip everything away and then try out the uh, ramadan fasting for a few days now we're talking there you go yeah so in the Ramadan fasting, you understand. Okay, we're giving Joe, 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 Rogan, Joe Rogan now. You're giving this him as sincere advice as one human to another. Do, a dopamine detox. You are yeah. doing these. What's a dopa, dopamine detox? It, it's very what's simple. It? You you strip everything away. You make life as simple as possible the way that the Creator intended. Mm. Right. So we just spend time in nature. Spend time with the people that you love. 
and just spend less if zero time on electronics yeah so no entertainment um no books even i'd say in in that little specific time right mm -hmm. so if he's gonna do that i'd say try this out man like three four days strip everything away and then also from sunrise to sunset don't drink any water don't eat any food and just spend time outside spend time meditation spend time self-reflecting he does he goes hunting yeah 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 so i'm sure he's he's had like very close states to what i'm referring to mm -hmm. maybe not in the dry fasted state that's that's the big change you hear is if he were to add the dopamine detox into a dry fasted state which is the whole ramadan fasting type deal and i feel like from there from there like he, he would probably start to you know connect the dots inshallah and then you can talk to him about, look, that experience, your experience before. And then you talk about these waves. Look, these waves. We know that, look, Islam is based on proof, evidence, right? For the person who wants scientific proof, you know, he wants to look at the Quran unchanged, tamper-free, tamper-proof. If he wants to look at all of the things, the prophecies, you know, there's no way that this human being, that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, could have came up with all these things. But then you have your personal experiences also, you know, that I'm sure someone, he'd be like, man, I want to feel that. We know that people, unless they're really truly connected with their creator, there's always that void. There's that mm -hmm. void, you know? Mm -hmm. And then talk about this, this, these waves, you know, that we're going, this feeling now, you know, once you start to come to, you know, you said you re read the Quran three times. Was that right? Yeah, yeah. Talk about that. Alhamdulillah. And these waves, what, do you, what are we talking about, these waves? Uh, so the waves happened the first time. The waves happened um, the third day of reading the Quran. Uh, I mean, each time I would read the Quran, I would, you know, kind of reflect, sit and reflect in like a meditation afterwards. And the third day of reading the Quran, I wasn't Muslim at the time, but everything just kind of clicked. And when everything clicked, it's like I, something in Simon was like, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess Allah is the only God. I guess, uh, I guess the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final messenger and like when all that clicked when the, it clicked and my mind just kind of went blank for a second like all these waves just started going in and out of my body I, very difficult to explain but that's the best explanation i have for it and when that happened i was like oh yeah i'm, I'm definitely a muslim alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. so so you were you were dealing with like what most people you were dealing with uh would you say classified like a deep depression you know what had you because you went through so many different phases in life uh if you go back catholic family father agnostic yeah. and then you have the going deep into christianity before that all of these different uh you know the new age movement and then kind of back to what your father was upon agnosticism until finally you kind of left islam towards was it towards the end why was that? You had these preconceived notions also that Islam was oppressive and whatnot. Why was it left at the end? Mm, yeah, so um, first off, I, I'd like to think that I, I don't have uh, deep depression. You know, I guess everyone would like to think that they don't have any psychological issues or any trauma or anything like that. But I've been through a rough life, man. And I noticed that any time that I would get like by myself, and I would kind of strip everything away and I didn't have any distractions and none of the so it, it would always lead to being in that depressive state you know and I've said it multiple times so I'm not ashamed of saying it um I, I was abused I was abused throughout my childhood my parents were divorced early on um, and, and the list goes on and on and on so it's like I guess yeah I, I guess I do struggle with some deep depression and uh aside from that why did i leave islam to the end i think i left islam towards the end because the the people that i had met who were muslim they uh their character showed so much like so much i guess hope you could say you know because it uh when you see a muslim who's like really on being like you know this you can feel this you don't have to be muslim in order to experience someone else's character 
right? And the, the people who I had run into who were Muslim, who had that, that taqwa, who had that, that character, that akhlaq, and the manners and all that, man, I was just like, yo, like, kind of like how Joe Rogan's saying, like, you know, maybe, maybe Islam is it, but for some reason, you know how, like, I don't know, I, I just didn't, it was kind of like a resistance internal, internally, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Would that be the resistance to like, okay, what he, she's going to say, my parents, what society, you think, what you falling into that category? Because that happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd say two categories. That category that you just said, because, you know, there's the negative stigma over here in the West. You got Islam being portrayed as a terrorist religion. And, um, yeah, it's just nothing but bad connotation, bad things that are associated with it, here in the West at least, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other side is, like, people want to know the truth, but people are afraid of knowing the truth because once you know the truth, like you can't go back, you know, like you, you're in a state of ignorance. Once you take the red pill, you, you can't go back to sleep. You can't go back into the dream. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, once you realize Islam is the truth, good luck going back. Subhan Subhanallah. Uh, you, you, you said a, you said a word also that we'll touch upon. Hopefully I won't forget red pill. You mm -hmm. mentioned when you take the red pill, that's from the uh, Matrix, right? Yeah. That movie, The Matrix, and then they're offered the blue and the red. And then what does that signify, that red pill? When he took the red pill, was it Keanu Reeves? Mm -hmm. when he, what does that signify when he took the red pill? When he took the red pill in the movie, he was uh, waking up from the Matrix. And the Matrix was this uh, false programming, this false reality. So it's like what he was living and what everyone else was living, it was all fake. It was all like this program that was just being run on and run on. But when you took the red pill, you step out of that program and then you start to see like what life really was. And that's that's kind of like what happens when you get into Islam. Did you become a PUA at one point? That's the the guys that go around hitting on girls, right? <laughs> Is it P PUA, pickup artist? Yeah, pickup artist. Yeah, I, I unfortunately, yeah, I did. Uh -huh. at one point i mean that's before islam everything is like a go right it's just yeah. like you know if you're in that world of like there's nothing to measure your morality by why not like what well, where would we where would you be without Islam? why why should you not do such and such and such right yeah it, it's like that that uh verse goes like do you not see the one who takes his uh his desires as his his lord mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it is subhanallah and this is what men i mean it's in the quran it's like the one thing that men desire the most is it's it, allah is telling us it's in the cross so now if you don't have no perimeters you don't have no guidelines no rules to live by then you become a pickup pick artist yeah. and if you have the ability it's crazy huh because that's a lot of times associated with with this uh red pill right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get into that later. Let's go back to this depression now. I want to make this clear because it's not just because, okay, now, because in the beginning you accept Islam and it's kind of like, you know, the hadith where the Prophet saw some last final message talks about like when someone enters Islam, submission to the will of the creator, not the creation, it's like he's like a newborn baby. All his sins just, mm -hmm. you know, are wiped away. And you have that feeling like that. Did you experience that feeling in the beginning? Like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You're just like on cloud nine. You're just you're feeling just amazing. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. There's no uh, such thing as a cloud nine, but I'm I'm just like yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah, the no, metaphorically. Hundred percent. Yeah, um, I I felt it, and I'd say like I still feel it, but I'd say now that I'm like closing in on a year, maybe a little bit more. Actually, no, we we still haven't hit a year yet. Mm -hmm. Me being Muslim, alhamdulillah. But as I'm closing in on this year, it's like. I'm kind of still seeing like, okay, I still did what I did. You know, Allah forgave me for it. Allah put like a blanket over it, but I'm still like, I still did it. Nonetheless, like I still had that experience. And the, the, the sad part is, is like a mind stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. 
So it's like, I've already done those things. There's no way that I can just eliminate that from my life, from my mind. So it's still there. So yeah, I still feel like that cloud nine type feeling, but then it's like, I'm, I'm still remembered like, yeah, I still did that, you know? So it, I say it humbles me. And instead of me being on cloud nine, it's more like, okay, I'm just, I'm just kind of like sober. Mm -hmm. I'm sober. Yeah. So a couple of points. One thing is obviously we're not proud of our past and we don't, want to go into any of the details but it just kind of because people are chasing that lifestyle so now you can say hold on hold on i went that way you don't want to go that direction i was there i did all those things that you're doing now and you're going to hit a dead end i hit the dead end why are you going to go hit a dead end or the bridge is out and you're going to fall down the mountain why are you going to do that i've been there you don't have to do it you can experience it through my my lens my life i mean so that's the thing that we try to get out like people who've been there and done that look at their lives now and look how unhappy they were and look where they're, they're at now and the other point was about the depression uh i don't want people to think like um, you know you find the purpose of life obviously now you have that contentment that peace and tranquility but you can't fall into all of us do myself included we all fall into those times of struggles and and you can get depressed right but you have the tools to get you out of that. You have dhikr, right? You have Allah. It's like a beautiful example is like you're on the ocean. The not yet Muslim, non-Muslim, the Muslim, they're going to both, let's say, be on, an o on the ocean. And then those waves are hitting, the turbulence is hitting, whatever. One has Allah, one doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So at the end, now you have the tools, you get through it, inshallah, and you're stronger. So yeah. Have you seen that? Has you how, how was that when you would hit certain times in your life and you didn't have these tools that you're learning about, you're getting more and more grounded in the deen. Mm -hmm. How was that helping you to navigate through life as opposed to through before when it was the other, the new age stuff and all these other things that were at your disposal? Yeah, so it's like you said, bro. It's like you said, where it's like now you have this guidebook. Now you have these guidelines. Now you know what to do. So it doesn't mean that you are exempt doesn't mean that you will never feel depressed or you'll never experience hardship it's just now you know what to do when you experience the hardship versus before when i wasn't muslim when i didn't have the guidelines when i didn't have the guidebook i, I didn't know what I, I was doing so anytime i would be feeling like life is amazing i would become very arrogant i would become very boastful and be like ah like it's because of me like i'm the one doing this here right and then a lot was like okay say less you know, like you, you think this is all this you think this is all you? Let's see. And then he strips it away. And then when he strips it all away, like the suffering that I'll go through because I didn't have any guidelines, I didn't know what to do. So I'm I'm over here trying to do the best that I can to get past it. So for for someone who's not on Dean, that might look like them maybe partaking in drugs more, maybe drinking alcohol more, maybe spending way too much time with other people. Maybe they are playing video games. Maybe they're watching pornography. Maybe they're doing something to kind of drown themselves out from that depression that they're experiencing. But people realize at some point or another, the only way out is through. Like, if you want to get through depression, if you want to get out of depression, you have to go through it, right? If you are angry, how do you stop being angry? You have to go through it. You have to let it run its course. If you, uh, let's say you hurt yourself and you have to heal up, like, okay, how do you heal up? It doesn't happen like that. You have to go through it. So with all these things, like you're gonna have to go through it. So why not have something that's like, here, do this, do that. Um, live in this style, think in this way. This is gonna allow you to get past what you're feeling here in the most easiest way possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And this is what you went and you continue to do, helping people deal with different addictions. And you had this video. You can explain what this uh, no fat means. Did you, you made this before Islam. Let's get into this and you can kind of give us a breakdown because this is a big addiction people are dealing with, pornography and all these other addictions. Yeah. Fat changed my life. Now, if you don't know what no fat is, it's basically this movement that was created where people stop playing with themselves and they stop watching pornography. I know, crazy, right? Like, why would anyone want to stop doing these things? <laughs> but I came across this a few years back, and it's because I realized that I had a problem. I realized that, hey, maybe what I'm doing isn't the best thing. It's crazy. 
crazy. No fap. So for people that have never heard of this, no fap. This is something new also to me. No, is it no fap? Mm-hmm. No fap. Yeah. So for the next generation, older generation, you know, many people are not keen to these new terms. Like what what was this message that you were getting out there? Yeah. So first off, let me just say the the shirt that I had on in the video, I think was by far the most comfortable shirt that I've ever <laughs> had in my life. Kind of, but, but um <laughs> no fat to get on top of it, no fat. Um no fat is basically where you stop masturbating you stop watching pornography and for this generation or at least for the people who are outside of religion that's that's a big thing for them you know like it's free you can go on a computer or your phone and you have access to unlimited things that will uh, quote unquote fulfill your desires Right, but that's not the the best thing in this world and the whole no fat movement it's basically to eliminate these things so that your body can kind of um go back to its normal state you see because if someone watches pornography what ends up happening is that it's releasing an excessive amount of dopamine into your system dopamine is a neurotransmitter kind of like uh acetylcholine uh, serotonin, things along that line. All right, there, there are more for sure. There are more for sure. I'm just not recalling them right now. But when you watch pornography, it's releasing this excessive amount of dopamine, and it's excessive because you would never have this in nature. It, it's not natural for you to be able to be with, let's say, 40, 50, 60 different sexual partners within like what 20 minutes 30 minutes it's not possible like it's, it's not something that, that Allah made for us Allah didn't create our bodies this way right so what ends up happening is that you have this excessive amount of dopamine and then it basically desensitizes your body to where you become less sensitive to real life so let's say you walk outside and let's say there's a butterfly that flies across like if you were sensitive, you would look at that butterfly and it would there would be an impact because you'd be present, you would experience that fully. But when you are desensitized, it's like that butterfly flies across and there's this lag time. There's this period where it's like you didn't really experience it. You just you you're kind of running like two to five seconds behind the time frame that you should be. You know, so to keep it more simple. Um, if you're desensitized, you're not going to notice a butterfly. If you're sensitized, you go outside and you see that butterfly and you say, subhanallah. And um, that's that's no fact. That's all it's doing. It's just resensitizing your body. And were you Muslim at the time when you made this? No, nah, I was not Muslim. Okay, so you're actually pushing, it, pushing this positive message even before Islam. Yeah. So this is a movement of not yet Muslims, non-Muslims who started this. Mm, it is non-Muslims for sure. And if you get mm. like deep down to the bone, NoFab is, is actually a business, unfortunately. Mm, became but, a business. Um, yeah, but still, like it, it's still helping people. So yeah. So it is what it is in that sense. But um, NoFab is meant to help people break free from destructive habits and addictions but little do they know that when they break free from these things they actually get closer to their creator they get more spiritual everyone who's been on nofab will attest to the same thing mm, this is deep uh so what do you think from your experience dealing and talking with this i had a guest on imam john he makes the connection he's lectured uh helped a lot of the youth People who are saying supposedly coming out and saying, look, you know, they're having doubts about Islam. They're having a faith iman crisis. He connects this crisis, much of it, a great majority of it to pornography addiction. Because now you made the thing, the statement now that you end up getting closer to your creator when you start disconnecting Mm -hmm. here. Now reverse that. Right. You keep doing it. What's the opposite going to happen? You're going to get more distant. Right. So he so we did a program here and we actually uh, you have, I think, is one of the serial killers on there. Uh, He was they were talking about FBI and whatnot. They were talking about I forgot what the um, person's name was. 
Ted was Bundy. It, one of them, yeah, it was a Bundy. And he talks about how, you know, this violent form of pornography, how this actually aided, you know, them, you know, with their thinking to go ahead and commit a lot of these crimes. What are your thoughts on that? It's the, it's the truth. It's the truth. Because um, when you watch these things, it's, it's programming you subconsciously. Like, I've, I've talked to many people who they say that, you know, what they learned in pornography when they're having sex with their, with their woman, it's not the same. And I'm like, well, of course it's not the same. Like, what did you expect? Like, number one, pornography is fake. They, they are literally acting. And they're recording the people. There are people behind camera recording this. And then on top of that, like everything is done excessively to appeal to people because what ends up happening is people, when they start watching pornography or they start taking drugs, they have this thing known as the Coolidge effect, meaning that you need more of the said thing in order to experience the same feeling you felt in the beginning. So if someone drinks alcohol, they're going to need more alcohol. They, they develop a tolerance, right? It's a simple terminology, a tolerance. Someone smokes weed the first time, there will never be another time like the first time. And every time that they smoke weed after that, they're going to try to emulate and have that same experience as the first time, but they will never experience that again, right? So that's the Coolidge effect. Now with pornography, it's the same thing. You watch pornography, the more someone watches pornography, the nastier the stuff they get into until they're doing something that's completely against what they are. Like they, they could be a straight heterosexual male and he could be so far gone into pornography that he's now watching homosexual pornography, but he's not, he's not gay himself, but he's watching this because he's literally desensitized himself so much that now he needs that in order for him to, get aroused and, and feel anything. So just think like if that's happening with that, like think about the other stuff that's occurring. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why it made sense to me what he, what he was saying, this uh, Imam John, what he was saying was that because of this, this is leading to a crisis of faith of Iman with a lot of people who are in this addiction. So what do you like to tell people who are going through this addiction right now? They're, they're tuning in. Where do you like to start? How do you like to help people? Because this is one of the things you do, right? You help people dealing with these different addictions. Mm. So ha having gone through a lot of these things, what would you tell the person? Like where to start, how to uh, get help? Well, are, are we refer referring to someone who is religious or are we referring to someone who is secular? Uh, both. 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 Right. So well, it's going to look different for each one. Because mm -hmm. obviously each one has different beliefs and you know different desires and stuff like that. Um, but for the non-secular person, I always tell them like, what does the best version of yourself look like? Like I'm talking about like when you watch a movie and you see like the that character that's like the the top character where you're just like, dang, like that's that's pretty dope. You know, like he, he's masculine, he's strong, he's confident. He's uh he's stoic, and all this stuff, all this stuff that they you might attribute to this character. Now look at yourself. Right? Look at yourself as the main character in your own life, in your own movie. Now, what would this character be doing? Would he be watching pornography all the time? Would he be masturbating all the time? The answer is probably not. And that's like that that makes a big shift in people who are uh secular. Now, for people who are religious, ah, it, it's really like it, it's all about understanding like what they're doing. You know, like number one, do you understand that time is running out? Number two, do you understand that uh, we're not guaranteed the next hour? We're not guaranteed the next minutes. Nothing is guaranteed. The only thing that's guaranteed is that we're gonna die and we're gonna be gathered right in front of our creator, a day of judgment. Right, that's guaranteed. Now, if you are religious, you understand these two things, and then you see what you're doing, well, now it's a matter of like kind of breaking it down. Okay, why am I going in this path? Why am I doing these things? And a big one could be, oh, well, I don't have a spouse. I'm not married. 
you know, and, and I'll, I'll catch on to the I'll talk on the ones where if, if they marry, what would they do? But um, nine times out of 10, the people who are doing this, they're not going to be married, right? Mm-hmm. So they're trying to fulfill their sexual urges without actually going out here and having sex with a woman without performing zina outside of marriage, you know? But that, I don't know which one's worse, man. I don't know which one's worse to watch pornography or to actually go out there and perform cinema. Now, both of them are terrible, and Allah has already said this. But it's like in reality, like when you look at like what's happening deep down on a, uh, I guess the the neurotransmitter level and all that stuff. Like even on the spiritual level, like which one is actually worse? Which one is worse here? And they think that watching pornography is worse when like it's not any better. It's not yeah, any better. Yeah, and some people just that's how Shaitan plays that game. He tries to just you try to, you know, make justifications. And now you even have now it's it's instead of the uh, VH tapes, VHS tapes, right? You have access all over, but now you actually you can dial up. People end up dialing up and you got someone live. Oh yeah, the live shows and all that. Right? It's, so it's, it's getting it's getting disgusting and it's getting to the point where they're having 3D the the virtual reality stuff. Once it gets like deeper into that, like trust that people are really gonna be in a rough point. But getting back to what we were saying about like the guy, if if the guy realizes that he's doing it because he's not married, well then the next question is like, okay, well what's what's preventing him from being married? And then starting to do the work necessary in order to become married, so that way you can get over the addiction because. The thing is with addictions is um if if we take the word addiction now it's actually just a pattern of behavior now of course each pattern of behavior will either lead you to rewards or will lead you to punishment but it, if you see it for what it is then you understand a pattern of behavior can only be changed if you replace it with something else and a lot of times people replace it with something worse you know it's like you don't want to you don't want to change one poison for another poison so in this sense, it's like you want to change that pattern of behavior with different patterns of behavior, which those patterns of behavior could be um, self-improvement, you know, maybe developing yourself in your faith, you know, in your deen, um, and developing yourself financially so you can support a wife. Because once you do those two, you're completing, or first part, the self-improvement, you're completing your 50% of your dean and then once you have the financial aspect done and you get married now you've completed the other 50 percent of your dean mm-hmm. you see what i'm saying so it's like it, it's very simple it's just a matter of like asking these questions and like going deep deeper down into your your psychology and figuring out uh, how you're working and how's everything going on here it's so amazing refreshing to see someone who went through the journey uh, like you have and now where you're at today, you know, t- giving this advice, you know, with the Islamic touch in it, it it's just so uh, beautiful to see. So what was that? Because it's no secret now. At the end, you ended up coming to Islam, uh, that complete and total submission to the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that Jesus worshipped, the one that Noah worshipped, Abraham, that pure monotheism, accepting the last and final messenger sent to mankind, a simple message, worship one and only one God, not his creation, and be morally upright. That's Islam. You're living Islam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, what was it at the end that had you finally, because you left it till the end, so what was it at the end when you went through all of the different things that were out there that had you accept Islam? So the thing that had me accepted 100% and stopped putting it off was the fact that uh, I was at my lowest point. You know, I had um, I had just gotten surgery. Um, the whole COVID thing was going on, so I wasn't really, you know, spending time with other people. I was by myself. I was in pain. I couldn't work out. I couldn't move, and I'm, I'm a pretty physical individual. I like just like playing sports. I like working out. I like training martial arts. I like doing all these things, always keeping in motion. That's how like mentally I would keep sane. And once I had that stripped away from me and then I had no social interactions and 
you know, I, I kind of knew intuitively that I didn't want to play video games and I didn't want to like watch TV shows and movies and all that stuff because I knew I would just kind of use that as a an escape. So once I was there, just kind of sitting at my lowest point, depressed, I was like, yeah, I got to do something. And then the only thing that came to my mind was like, okay, last time I was in this position, I did dopamine detox and I started to come to the answers, you know? And I even spoke about this where the first time I did dopamine detox, I started to feel the pull towards Islam, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, answer that. I didn't go to it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was scared of knowing the truth a hundred percent. And, um, this time, like all I was thinking about was just feeling better. I didn't want to feel depressed. I just wanted to feel better. So, I started doing the dopamine detox and then I started to same, feel that same pull to Islam. And for like three days, maybe three days, I'd say I kept putting it off. I was like, you know what? No, like I'm, I'm doing this dopamine detox. I don't want to read. I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to sit and meditate and reflect and heal from whatever it is that I got to heal from. And then by the third day, I was like, you know what? Let me just read. Let me just read the Quran because I have it. It's, it's just reading, it's holy text, so it's not like it's destroying this whole dopamine detox process. And that's when I started reading it, and once I started reading it, bro, the rest is history. So would you, would you, uh, the, what advice would you give? Read, would you say, read the Quran? You've read every other book, Joe Rogan, yeah. whoever else is out there. Just read the Quran, a good uh, English translation or Spanish or whatever background you come mm -hmm. from. Re read the Quran, start with that. Uh, I want to say read the Quran, but it, it's like with every person, like it's, it's subject it's to individuality. So it's exactly. Yeah. Though. So like someone reading the Quran might be a hundred percent for them. And then for another person, it might be that self reflection that they need for another person. It might just be breaking out of their shell, like t being more social, talking to people more. So they can kind of open their mind because what ends up happening is, is we close ourselves off. And when we are closed off, we close ourselves off to guidance, mm -hmm. right? And like, for whatever reason, we close ourselves off. We need to figure out what that reason is and start to kind of open up from there. But I'd still say reading the Quran is a, a big, a big piece of the puzzle here for sure. Mm -hmm. When did you, at what point did you ask? This seems something, it just seems like something so simple. But a lot of people, they just don't do the simple, right? They do the complicated and the convoluted. Mm -hmm. Just asking the creator, the one who created creation, guide me. Like, you created mm -hmm. me, guide me. Like, did you uh, end up doing that at one point? Asking God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Not Jesus, not Muhammad, but just not the sun, not the moon, none of these things yeah. in create, not the crystals, not the jinn, not the spirits, but just the one who created everything. Yeah, so it's it's crazy that you even bring that up. But when I was Christian and I was with my ex fiance, I remember I would, because I still had that new age mentality. So I was always constantly like researching, constantly looking things up and trying to like, piece the the pieces in my head and i would always come to these like crazy these crazy conclusions and i'd share that with everyone because i thought it was so crazy and and some people loved it some people were like bro that's that's just too much but i remember talking to my ex fiance's mom at the time and i was like telling her all this stuff and i was so passionate about it because i was like making these uh connections in my head and she shared this thing with me saying that like it was talking about God, and obviously, in the context, they were, they were probably, you know, referring to Jesus, but what was said in this little piece was basically saying, like, uh, man is always trying to understand further. Like, we're always trying to basically, like, the mind is always trying to come up with this complex answer. When it's like, you you don't need to do that. It's it's very simple. You just, you come to me. And, and the thing was like, you come to me, you come into my presence and you will be, you will be at peace. And like, when I read that, I was like, wow, like, this is too simple. This is too simple for me. And then like, it, it never kind of, it, it never left, I'll be honest. 
it never left. And I, I kind of started to, I kind of started to simplify things over time. And like the more I simplified it, the more I kept asking like, oh, well, well, this seems too complicated. Like, how can this be more simple? How can, like, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the most simple way here? And I kept asking the question, what's the most simple way here? And here I am, bro, in Islam. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah. that's amazing because shaitan makes it complicated, right? And seems like, oh, there's so many religions. Oh, they're all teaching good. They're all, you know, way like spokes on the wheel. But when you look into the different religions, you know, in all respect, you know, to the people who're not trying to disparage on any, but you can see it one form or another, like you were talking about the the way of life that the you were, the woman you're going to marry, you just saw contradiction after contradiction. It didn't make sense too much left interpretation you wanted something straightforward clear simple mm. and in one way or another these uh, man-made religions are calling you to worship the creation uh, confusion but when you come to islam it's straightforward it's clear mm. it's like uh i compare it like from darkness to light yeah yeah. yeah, and you're a living testimony to that. So with the people out there who have all these prejudices, stereotypes, media manipulation has gotten to them, what do you say to people like that? But they have that deep void, right? And they're stumbling yeah. in the dark. What do you like to tell someone like that? I say look for the truth, look mm -hmm. for the answers. Like if you, if you sincerely want to know the answers, if you sincerely want to be at peace, if you sincerely want to live the best life that you can live, look for the answers because they're there. And the more sincere you become in your search, the more you'll be guided and eventually you'll, you'll find what you're looking for. You see now we got a few minutes left for the Muslims out there. Everyone develops differently with their spirituality. We understand. But now, alhamdulillah, you're getting grounded more and more into the deen. But then when you see people taking things for granted have you seen some of that where now some of the basic stuff you know hijab is not islam is a part of islam the beard is not islam is part of islam but then you just make that small example with the other things like prayer the bigger things you know and now simple things that can be making your life less complicated but you see a lot of muslims taking it for granted and not implementing salah not implementing the deen actually sometimes being an obstacle for people like you will come on and say oh you don't have to put the beer you don't have to wear hijab you don't have to do this you don't have to give up this that and the other right have you seen some of this and what's your response to that and advice for those who are also struggling in that arena of confusion and they're muslim mm -hmm. I, the first thing i'd ask is like is that bringing you peace you know, because if they're thinking that way, it's probably because in the, where they're living, their environment, what they are subject to, you know, where you have Muslims and they live in the West. And no, like there's no women over here that are really covering up. If anything, they're trying to wear as little as possible over here in the West. So it's like, you have that constantly being bombarded. And if, if the woman is, let's say if this Muslim wife, she's going on social media a lot, she's watching TV shows and all that. And then her friends are also non-Muslim. And then she's going out into society and she's seeing all these non-Muslim women. Do you not think that that's going to affect your psychology? Like we are a product of our environment. So if the girl, if the Muslim is, is thinking this way, if she doesn't want to wear the hijab and she doesn't want to do these so-and-so things. Like you got to ask yourself the real question. Like, is this bringing you peace? Is this, and if not, then why, you know? And from there, you, from there, it's, I don't want to get too complex with it, but it, it's asking yourself a simple question. It's like, is this bringing me peace? Is it bringing me happiness? And why is it that I'm doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People can uh, catch up with you and the other brothers, the three Muslims. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah. And, uh, so where, where, where else people can hook up with you to learn more? Alhamdulillah. What's your so, story? Uh, if you guys just want to hear my stuff and like the videos that I put out over like self improvement, you can go to my personal channel, which is my name, but with an extra A. Extra A. 
And then if if you want to get into the real stuff, the you know the spirituality aspect, Islam, uh, philosophy, all this beautiful stuff. That's where I have the uh, the three Muslim channel. I'm I'm a part of that with two other brothers, and we we try to put up as much content as possible. I try to keep it real. I try to keep it raw and unfiltered, because our main intention from the beginning was kind of just recording our conversations that we were having so that way other people can be a part of that conversation. You know, yeah, you're not there physically with us, but you're a part of it. And I feel like that's something that we as uh, humans, we're just kind of missing that. You know, it's not very often that you meet other people who are on the same wave as you, you know? So we made these videos with that intention and we're just we're trying to help that's it and beautiful inshallah this can be a benefit because we're not just trying to tell stories we're trying to change lives so your story has a lot of good behind it alhamdulillah and hopefully people like mr joe rogan and others like him and people who have these preconceived notions just like you did oh muslims are arabs or they're oppressive and all this other nonsense right all the media manipulation that's happening in the world people can see behind that you just gave them a taste and if they're sincere and they want to know the truth inshallah this can inspire people to look more further than this they've been seeing yeah. and uh thank you very much man it was really nice uh talking with you alhamdulillah bro and jazakallah here for having me I mean, I mean, we're gonna have to do it again. We didn't, we just scratched the surface. I got a yeah. lot I'd like to talk to you more about. Uh, inshallah, we can do that in the future. Inshallah. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Asalaamu Alaikum. And thank you guys for tuning in. Another amazing story with our brother Hangil. Uh, go ahead and um, leave us uh, the comments in the comments below what you thought. Any uh, things you'd like uh, us to talk to him about in the future, maybe on a. Uh, program we'll do with him inshallah i really enjoy talking to the brother subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time here on the dean show until then peace